hello students today we will start a new topic that is eye inspiration inspiration means when we will uh, introduce a medication or uh, instill a medication into the eye that is called as a eye installation procedure so definition of eye installation and insulin installation is defined as process by which a liquid medication is introduced into a cavity drop by drop when the patient is having any infection or or any other eye disorder or any other problem so in that time we have the uh, ophthalmologist which will be prescribe some medication it should be a drop so in that time when we will applying this drop into the patient's eye so uh, drop by drop it is called as a uh, installation of eye drop or uh, eye installation then installation of medication into the eye medication uh, may be instilled in the form of eye drop or ointment so medication means uh, it may be instilled in the form of eye drop or ointment both which will be um, pres- uh, comes under the installation but first we will deal with the uh, eye drop installation uh, yes. so then after that we will um, learn how to apply the ointment in the eye the commonly used eye drop and ointments are atropine atropine one person which will be used to dilate the pupil then the ophthalmologist uh, they wants to dilate the pupil in that time they will use the atropine one person then uh, aspirin uh, aspirin which will be half percent to contact the pupil so atropine which will be dilating the pupil and aspirin which will be contract the pupil then adrenaline it will be one by Thousand percent to check the bleeding. Whether the uh, whether in the patient's eye the bleeding which will be present or not inside the eye any internal bleeding which will be present or not so it will be checked by the adrenaline. The next is the silver nitrate. It should be one to two percent as an it is used as an antiseptic and especially used in bronchial infection. Then mercurochrome. <laughs> sorry mercurochrome which will be 1 to 2% it will be also used as an antiseptic uh, eye drop then uh, boric acid it will be 2 to 4% it will be also used as a antiseptic the next is the novocaine and cocaine novocaine and cocaine it is act as a local anesthesia when any procedure um they have to perform in that time they will use this local anesthesia then tetramycin and sopramycin it act as a antibiotic then betnovit eye ointment so this betnovit eye ointment it act as a or the action of this betnovit eye ointment is anti infective and anti inflammatory drugs the next is points to remember this is a clean procedure and sir it is a, a not a sterile procedure it is a clean procedure where both eye may require treatment sometime both eye may require treatment or sometime only one eye may require the treatment so it will be depend upon the patient's condition or the patient uh, disease or patient uh, uh, infection so in this time each eye must be treated separately whenever we will uh, treat the eye in that time we will separate the uh, we will treat the eye separately if infection is present so uh, if the patient is having the problem of infection so in that time we will use two separate bottles of medication one for each eye to prevent cross contamination if uh, um, if we will touch uh, during the time of installation of drop and uh, 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 by mistake then it will be touch in the eye so in that time that bottle it will be also contaminated so to prevent from this contamination cross contamination we will use uh, two bottles one for right eye one for left eye if only one container the least affected eye should be treated first but if the container which will be one there will be two condition so if only one container is there so in that time what we have to do we have to uh, first we will uh, instill the uh, medication into the uh, least affected eye and after that we have to uh, instill the medica- uh, drop in the a uh, more affected eye so it will be treated first to minimize the likelihood of transfer of infection from one eye to other eye means hum ye kyun karte hain kyunki agar hum zyada contaminated eye mein pehle dalenge zyada infected eye mein so in that time that contamination which will be creating the infection to 
least contaminated eyes. So to prevent this contamination, we have to use uh, the container in the least contaminated eye. Then after that, we will be using the more contaminated eye. If more than one medication is being inserted into the eye here, must be taken to give time for the first medication to be absorbed before applying further medications. Uh, sometimes there will be two or three drops which will be there. So in that time, what we have to do, we have to do, first we have to uh, instill a drop of medication in the patient's eye and we have to wait for some time so that the uh, medication which will be absorbed and after absorption in the eye, then only we will uh, instill the uh, another medication into the patient's eye. Then what are the purposes of this? So treat infection. Uh, when the person is uh, having the problem of any infection in the eye, so to treat the infection, we will use this uh, um, eye installation procedure. Uh, then uh, uh, whether um, the ophthalmologist, uh, they have to check the eye. So to dilate or to contract the pupil, uh, we will also use this eye installation procedure to instill medication before examination or any surgery to eye. Then, so, uh, whenever we have to perform or whenever the surgeon, they have to perform any examination or surgery. So before any examination or surgery, they have to instill some specific medication to check the eye. Then to relieve pain. If the patient is having any conjunctivitis or any other infection or any other problem so that the patient is having any pain or discomfort or itching. So in that time, we will also um, perform this procedure that is called as a eye installation. Then next is the lubricate eye. Sometimes the patient's eye which will be dry. So uh, some fluid which will be present in the eye that fluid which will be decreases. So in that time, uh, uh, the eye, it should be lubricated. So for this also, the ophthalmologist, which will be give some drops to stain cornea for identifying aberration and scar. So uh, to identifying in the cornea that the patient is having any aberration or scar. So um, um, for this also, we have to perform this eye installation procedure. Then next is the equipment. So in equipment, first we have to uh, take a tray, a sealed tray containing uh, prescribed eye drop ointment, then dressing pan, which will be small balls or cotton balls, uh, it should be sterile. Then uh, we have to cap the apron, then uh, kidney tray, normal sign kidney tray to discount the liquid waste normal saline if the patient's eye which will be contaminated so clean that eye first then after that only we will applying uh, or instill the drop then medication card so that we will identify or uh, we will maintaining our recording or reporting then prescribe medication form then record form then general instruction be certain that you have the right patient right medication and the right eye so uh, whenever we will perform this procedure, in that time we have to check that uh, the patient it should be right, the right medication and the right eye. If the medication, it will be only for left eye and we will uh, instill the medication in right eye. So it will be also creating some further complications. So we have to check that the patient is having uh, eye drop installation in which eye. Uh, then check the doctor's order to see what medication is to be instilled in which eye. Means that if the two medication is there and the two different medication which will be used in two different different eyes. So we have to check that which me which medication which will be instilled in which eye. Then never instill any medication into the eye unless it is ordered by the physician. Means that if the patient is having infection, other patient with the infection or yeah, if the patient is having itching or if the patient is having redness then um apne aap unko koi bhi medicine ko instill nahi karna hai unless it will be not ordered by the physician it will be creating some further complication or any further side effect which will be shown in the eyes then check the expiry date of medication we have to whenever we will give the medication to the patient or installation of the medication or applying any ointment to so, so as a nurse it is our first responsibility that we should check the expiry manufacturing date 
and the expiry date of the medication. Never apply any medication with the date of expiry already over. If the date of expiry already over, so uh, we will not applying that medication into the patient's IV. It is not only for eye, but it will be also for uh, oral medication or IV injection or uh, subtle injection. Means it will be apply, uh, applicable for all. Then uh, never use any eye drops which are discolored. Means uh, if the uh, uh, if the discoloration which will be occur in the eye drop or any cloudy appearance or precipitated. Uh, um, uh, uh, fluid which will be seen in the eye drops so in that time we will not give never give these type of uh, drops to the patient then ophthalmic solution should be sterile and are prevented from contaminating during the preparation or administration so uh, whenever you will give a, uh, this ophthalmic solution you have to remember that this ophthalmic solution it should be a sterile and uh, prevented from contamination so when we will uh, preparing the medication in that time we have to prevent from contamination use separate eye droppers for separate medication so uh, for uh, means uh, for it, if any two medication is there so that we will not use one dropper we will use the separate separate dropper for separate separate medication then neither uh, substitute a solution or medication of one strength with uh, that of another strength nor substitute one medication for uh, another without permission from the doctor so the solution the solution of medication of one strength with the another strength and the substitute which will be one medication for another so we will not give any medication without the permission of the physician then uh, never use any solution or ointment which are unlabeled to instill in the eye so uh, if uh, the ointment or the solution which will be unabled uh, sorry unlabeled so in that time we will not use that type of uh, uh, drop or uh, this uh, ointment uh, for the installation in the eyes then next is procedure so in procedure First, we have to prepare the article. Then after preparing the article, we have to explain the procedure to the patient to gain the confidence of the patient. And uh, after gaining the confidence, the patient will be also able to uh, cooperate with us. Then uh, we have to place the patient in a backline position. So that uh, and uh, in this position, we have to uh, extended the head it should be hyper extended with a pillow under the shoulder then we have to ask the patient to look upward while the nurse separate the lower lead by pressing it against the cheek bone so we have to uh, press the cheek bone in the lower lead so that the, uh, in that time the patient should be a uh, look in the upward the drop are taken in a dropper holding the dropper from 1 to 2 cm above the eye then instill the uh, we have to see that uh, how much drop we have to instill in the eye it should be written in the uh, pres uh, prescription of the um, patient so instill the number of drop in the center of the lower lead then if ointment is to be applied apply it from the inner aspect to the outer aspect then uh, after applying uh, the drop Ask the patient to close the eyelid and move the eyeball from side to separate the medication all over the conjunctiva. So when we will instill the medication, after instilling the medication, we have to ask the patient to close the eyelid and we have to also explain the patient to move the eyeball. So when the patient which will be moving the eyeball from side to spread the medication all over the conjunctiva. Then uh, next one is why the excess medication, if the excess medication, it should should be uh, uh, re remain on the eye with a clean we have to clean with a uh, clean cotton swab or a sterile cotton swab uh, if we will not clean in that time the patient which will be uh, having the problem of uh, any irritation or any itching so we have to clean uh, with the clean cotton swab then the nurse discard a a small amount of ointment on a sterile cotton ball and wipe the top of the tube with before she replaces the cap then after that the nurse discard means uh, uh, after applying the 
ointment, the nurse should be discard a small amount of ointment on a sterile cotton ball and wipe the top of the tube so that we will uh, after that we will replace the cap. So uh, for uh, further uh, uh, applying the ointment, uh, we will clean we will clean the upper portion of the uh, tube so in that time it will be prevent from the contamination of the further eye then uh, next procedure is uh, how we have to apply the eye ointment so first we have to do the uh, hand washing then hold the nozzle of the tube approximately 2.5 cm above the eye then apply a <coughs> Sorry, apply a line of ointment to inner edge of the lower lid from the nasal corner outward. So, uh, in this uh, means in uh, eye drop installation, we have to instill the drop in the middle of the eye. But in this eye ointment procedure, we have to apply a ointment to the inner edge of the lower lid from the nasal corner outward. Then encourage the patient to close the eye but not to squeeze or rub them. So when if the patient which will be squeeze or rub them so all the ointment which will be come out from the eye. Then dab away excess medication with gauze. So after uh, if the excess medication which will be present in, uh, um, in the eye so we have to clean with the gauze. Then we have to ensure that the patient which will be comfort and we have to give a proper comfortable position to the patient. We have to remove the gloves. We have to dispose of gloves and other waste as per infection control policy. Then we have to return all the equipments to the nurse station and we have to clean the utensils so that we will uh, perform a next procedure. And uh, after that, we have to do the hand washing and after hand washing, we have to maintain a proper recording and reporting. So these all are about my topic. So thank you.